Hi, this is my review of the uh, High Bike 7.0 Trekking. Now, this is the actual bike in question that I've actually taken delivery of. It's my first e-bike, um, so this is going to be a little quick overview of the bike. I'll go through some of the uh, features on the bike along with um, the build quality and generally my experience of my first e-bike. So first of all, we'll kick it off with the actual build quality. Now, one of the things I'll give High Bike uh, kudos here for is the paintwork and the build quality of the frame is absolutely superb. Apparently it's an aluminium um, 6061. I don't know if it's chrome molly. Might be chrome molly, I don't know. But anyway, it's a 6060 aluminium and it's got um, three axle front forks with a quick release. Quick release, non for axle on the rear of the frame. It's got high bike component hubs front and rear. You've got the um, Suntour 45 LOR um, steel spring suspension. They're not um, air sprung, they're, they're steel sprung, but they've got the uh, preload adjustment on one side and the lockout on the other, which is really, really handy for smoother roads. Now, the actual brakes on the bike are the uh, Shimano MT400s, which are controlled by effectively two finger um, brake levers at the front. They're really, really progressive. I have actually rode this bike for about 130 miles now. I've only had it over a week, and I must admit, in the dry at least, they're absolutely superb. I've actually gone down some very, very steep hills in excess of 30 mile an hour and had to come to a complete stop and they do it very very securely and safely but really really nice and progressive and there's no juddering or nothing they're really really nice uh, the discs are 160 millimeters front and rear and the wheels are the uh roadie uh they are tryp35s with uh sapien uh black they're like an adenized uh black spokes really really nice really really lovely rims and spokes and the tires are the Schwalbe like punch resistant uh, Mot Super Moto X but these particular tires have actually got the reflective um, trim around them because you can actually get some um, e-bikes that don't actually have that reflective trim which is quite handy because this is more aimed at road and trail use hence the reason it's got fitted uh, full length fenders back in front which are in a lovely really really smart black um, they're like plastic. Um, I don't know if they're plastic or aluminium. They feel like plastic, um, but they don't make any noise, and they're really, really well supported um, by these really strong braces. Uh, you've got one at the front, on the front of the uh, forks, but I say they're really, really strong, and the same on the rear. The rears are even uh, uh, even tightly mounted because you've got braces here. You've also got a brace up here one uh, here and i don't know if you can see it between the back uh, wheel and this back block is another screw that's holding it here so they're really really well um held onto the um, bike along with the carry more rack which is rated for 25 kilos max apparently um i will be getting some panniers for this in time which would be quite nice now if we go around i'll talk about the drivetrain in a minute we'll just go through the front uh, unit you've got slx 11 speed rapid wires these actually allow you to go um like effectively up the gears onto the high gears um three in succession but only one down so you can go one two three it won't let me do it because i'm holding the camera at the same time but basically they do three down one uh, sorry three up one down and the joy to use along with the um slx rear derailleur which features a lockout on here which actually prevents the, um, it says it's got a little on here. If you put it on up there, it locks in place. And that basically just tightens the chain up a bit. High bike has sensibly fitted a chain guard uh, here that when the, if the chain does bounce around, you won't get no nicks in this lovely paintwork. I've done a fantastic job of paintwork. Really, really lovely. And obviously you've also got this little chain ring here. So you've got a, I believe it's a 16 tooth at the front and 11 to 46 sprocket Shimano SLX on the rear, which is really, really nice, but it changes gear superbly. It's a joy to use. So other features, uh, you've got a high bike uh, saddle. I am pl and I'm planning on replacing this. It's pretty comfortable, but it's stock. It's not 
probably the best thing in the world but I say that's a lot of people change them the grips are XLC um, with lock with, I believe they're locked yep yeah, they're locked on um, if you ignore the lighting I'll come back to the lighting in a moment um, the handlebars are high bike own components uh, as is the stem and like I said the front and rear hubs are high bike as well components so there's a lot of high bike uh, componentry their own componentry on this bike uh, and it works really well the seat post actually is 31.6 millimeters i believe that again that's their own that's aluminium as well um and i think that's about it on the front end i will go through the drivetrain oh one other thing um most e-bikes don't come with pedals um don't ask me why um my particular bike come with some stock pedals which were absolutely rubbish they done the job um, but I bought the Shimano I believe the uh, PDGR 500s uh, they're aluminium um, and I wanted a wider footprint because I'm quite wide uh, footed um, and they work really really well on this bike plus they match it I mean they obviously you've got the case and it's all like this matte black and they look and the rims are uh, matte black really nice oh the rear stand is standard um, and it's adjustable there is a screw behind the back of here which you can adjust it if you want it for different heights which is quite handy um so yeah um just talking about the build quality and the paintwork one of the things i really liked about this bike was the fact that it's not just jet black i mean the fenders and mud guards are black and a lot of it's black but i actually wanted something that was a bit more high visible uh, or highly visible uh, and obviously with the white and the turquoise blue accents it just makes it a bit more standy out so i mean not everyone's paying attention as you probably know uh, if you are a cyclist uh, it's a case of see and being be seen um and yeah so one of the other great things about this bike you get standard fitment of lights um so i'll come back to these lights in a moment now to activate these lights on the intuitive display you literally power it up and oh the lights are actually on because i've had them on already because what i do is when i'm riding out on the roads um this isn't just at night obviously it's a case like i just said a moment ago it's about being seen by other motorists uh, people not be, might not be paying attention if they see lights i go oh, what's that as they're coming down the road um so i leave them on although i say these lights i activate after but i'll get to that in a moment so effectively um you get your little tiny light button here and there's when you press it you'll see the light indicator up here above the miles per hour sign and effectively the rear led is provided by a company called axa blue line and this is a brilliant design because not only is it visible behind it also pans out at the side so you, this light that's coming along this uh, like clear strip here eliminates this whole section here so people can actually see it side on sadly the front light isn't it's obscured by the plastic now this is adequate at best um personally if you're riding like as you can probably see around here i'm in the middle of nowhere um a lot of my riding is out here and you need all the light you can get because you want to be be seen for literally hundreds of yards up the road and that doesn't cut it um that's my own personal opinion now high bike actually are using a company called sky beamer um, i don't know if that's their own proprietary brand or it's someone they've brought in but on the uh, higher range models they come available with the 350 the uh, sorry the 150 which is on this bike uh, the 7 and they also do it on the um they also do a 300 i believe on the 9.0 and they also do a 5000 which is a bit extreme so it basically goes 150 300 5000 why didn't they bring out a 1500 or a 1500 anyway uh, but the point i wanted to make is i've got no way of contacting high bike to actually see if that unit is actually upgradable because it's only held in by these two screws here i believe um and then the whole unit will probably come away i don't know if the intuitive unit has to be replaced as well like the it has to work around it i don't know um this is just my camera mount for the mount so ignore this for a moment um but yeah i say in the daytime and on its own it's adequate at best um it doesn't cut it guys
it's a shame because the rest of the bike is absolutely stunning um, so if there is a way of upgrading this at some point I will only to clear up the cockpit area and as a consequence I've bought these uh, Knight Rider uh, 850s and basically they've got three power settings so effectively you just press them on you go one two and then really high and I predominantly leave these excuse me on the uh, single setting so basically to power up and that way you've got a lot of visibility out on the road and I only use the second power settings when I'm out here in the middle of nowhere when it's pitch black because I have ridden it uh, in the evening because it's quite enjoyable uh, going at, at night because it's a bit calm and there's virtually nothing on the road and the good thing about riding um, at night especially on these country lanes they can see these lights for miles away whereas in the daytime you wouldn't see a bike coming around the corner so it's um, yeah take your life in your own hands a little bit now going back to the drive unit now um, one of the great things about the high bike range is they, uh, this particular model actually uses the Bosch Performance Line CX. Now, I'll be honest with you, in terms of my riding, that I've actually ridden it so far, and this is my first e-bike, this is absolutely a superb drivetrain. Um, the whole point of me getting an e-bike is basically to build up my uh, knee muscles, um, especially my uh, right knee, because I've done it in, in a sports injury many years ago. And I'm actually using the system off on all the straights, uh, where well, I don't need any assistance. As soon as I start getting inclines, I predominantly use Eco, and on the steeper, I actually use a mode, which I've since found out is actually on this uh, bike. It was by ways of a software update on the Performance Line CX motors, which uh, you can access through the, um, if you go above Eco, so you go um, up to the, you'll see it on the panel, it'll say, EMD, EMT bear. I don't know if you see that, it'll come up quick. I'll go back down again in the tour, then back up in the sport. See that? See, it disappears for a second. See? And that's available in the sport mode. Now, the beauty I like about that EMTB mode, which was made for mountain bikes on this bike, and I think it should be on all bikes, is if you leave it in that sport setting, it alternates between the touring setting and the turbo setting and sport in varying levels of degree of uh, assistance so instead of you pressing the button to go up to that i predominantly either just use eco or sport and that way it works out between the two and it just gives you varying levels of uh, assistance depending on how hard you're pedaling um and it's a fantastic system um personally just my own personal opinion i think all of this eventually should be done away with the, the system should be adaptable it should basically start you off in eco and sense how you're riding and maybe it can have i don't know dryer stabilizers in it to actually sense the gradient and just do it all on the fly so you don't have to do that um, it is nice having a manual control but in all honesty like i say i either use eco or sport i don't use the other settings it's, it kind of makes it a mute point but it is only available on the cx performance line um, apparently um, so I've actually seen so far um, so going back to the drivetrain really really nice very very smooth one point to mention and uh, Court actually mentions this on uh, electric bike reviews I'll put the link in the uh, section below is when you're changing gear on e-bikes so effectively if you're changing gears with the levers and you come down the gears if you are pedaling when you're changing gear you get a uh, I think called calls it a mashing it's basically the gears are clonking it, it really you can feel it really abrupt um, it isn't happy about it and it doesn't um, enhance the riding experience so what I predominantly do um, is I actually let off gently as I'm about to change as I'm changing it I let off gently and then just do it nice and gently and then it changes gear and it's lovely and smooth um, and that's not detracting from the SLX uh, group set on this, which is absolutely superb. These are brilliant. They, it's, they're so surprised. They're a joy to use, as are the shifters. But as I say, this mashing or clicking or clunking um, really detracts from it if you're trying to do it. So you just have to have a little bit of uh, foresight when you're about to change gear. And I say I've only had the bike a week, and I've got used to it within the first few days. Um, and in all honesty, it is that easy you just literally get used to it is there's um nothing more to say about it than that really it's it just it's like second nature that's the point i was trying to make become second nature and uh yeah so really really nice now in terms of 
what this bike is made for um it is a trekking model which means it's made, being made for trail so you've got front suspension um you've got about 80 millimeters of travel which is more than enough um personally i mean i don't know if you can see this there's a blue uh, ring here uh, this is the maximum i mean and this was from the other day if i push that down there when i'm riding it will go up and it will actually go up to the maximum of like what you use and it never goes much more than that so that's about all i'm using which is probably about 40 millimeters maximum um so it's more than enough for trail use that's the point i was trying to make um the Swalby tyres, the Supermoto X with the reflective uh, line, these tyres are brilliant for this bike. Um, I actually come from a motorcycle heritage um, and I must admit, this is as close to riding a motorcycle as I've ever had. Um, on, a, on, a, on a push bike, I should say. Um, now, the, the, the tread pattern on these particular tyres aren't like a mountain bike tread. They're more of a kind of trail uh, tread i was actually looking to go for some other schwabies and in fact i still am when they wear down i don't know if i can get them on the 27.5 inch uh, rims um but they're in between say a road tire and, and a um, mountain bike tire uh, because when i was out riding the other day i actually got stuck in some i didn't get stuck but i was driving i, I basically went down a route that i thought was going to be dry and it was i should have really turned back and i persevered the bike got completely caked in mud um, and by the way when you're washing this thing it's it comes up like brand new the paintwork is so good as is all the components to get mud off anyway but i say the tires were actually doing an admirable job in them conditions and it was a wrong place to take this bike seriously but it done it um, i'll stand upright one thing to note if you're on slippery conditions turn all the assistance off because otherwise the wheels just spin it's, it's kind of common sense in a way because you're trying to put the power down and that's trying to feed the power through and it's like slipping so you just turn it all off and uh yeah that was fun but i say in all other kind of uh, conditions road and like these kind of conditions like these it's like kind of like broken bitumen those tires and the suspension and, and the whole bike is absolutely superb um, i will mess around with the tire pressures at some point and actually see how that affects because i've watched uh, court on some of his other videos and when he goes on to like softer um uh terrain like sand and stuff that you lower the tire pressures just to get the extra grip i haven't done none of that yet that will come in in time if i ever take it on like softer um terrain just to try that out but yeah overall guys absolutely thoroughly recommend this bike in their range um i mean in time things might change i might actually get the whole point of doing this uh, extra little vlog on this um bike is effectively when if things do go wrong um i can document them here for other people who are interested in e-bikes um as a note the bosch drivetrain and battery come with a two-year manufacturer's warranty and it's a really really well proven unit um i believe uh, bosch have actually been making electric motors now i mean i've been watching court for a good few years now and some of their early systems they've got to be over six years old um in their design and uh yeah very very good motor really really well proven as, as far as washing by the way guys um you're not allowed well you shouldn't jet wash these because they have got components inside um i just uh, rinse it with like a uh, hose water um i take the battery off so I, you basically put the key in and turn it actually i'll show you that quickly um so basically you can do it as a one off one hand operation you get two keys they're made by um abus and all you do basically is put the key in and turn it and that has released it and then literally one-handed you lift it up and off and so the connectors down here connect up into that and you can connect it with the charger the same way into here or you can actually charge it with the battery on there by using this little plug under it and you've got a connector in there and all you do is connect the um charge your unit up to it and then go from there so putting it back on again just line up the prongs put it down and then basically line it up and then just i don't know if i can do this with one hand Oop, let me try it there you go did you hear that lock and it's locked that's it secure done perfect um as far as charging it's concerned uh the manufacturer claims four and a half hours from flat to fully charged 
I've only ever gone down to two bars and it took about two and a half, three hours to go back up. So I think the inclines are pretty much uh, accurate. Um, but they do specify keeping the battery off the bike if you're going to store it in the cold. So effectively keep your battery indoors or in a like milder, um, unless you've got a garage or shed that's heated, that's different. Most of them aren't. So I suggest taking the battery off and charging it and keeping it indoors at room temperature and then putting it back on because it's a doddle to put in there. The charge that you actually get supplied with this is actually the, um, I've actually got it here actually, I brought it out with me. Um, it is a four amp um, unit. Now this is obviously with a UK plug if you're watching this and the say, this is, you can see the output there, it's four amp. Uh, they do actually do a uh, six amp, what's called rapid charger. Um, and it does work with this particular bike and that will apparently rapid charge the battery in about two and a half hours so if you are using this um like uh, a commuter and you do need to actually um just let me put this battery back if you do need a, a faster charge like in a certain time frame um, I mean, most of us shouldn't work for so many hours, but I don't know, maybe your circumstances might be different and you need a fast charge. There is a rapid charge available for this, so that's worth bearing in mind. Uh, no rapid gate issues here. Maybe I should get the rapid charge and try it. No, I'm only kidding. Um, anyway, guys, that's about it for this overview. Um, as I say, I will connect up the camera uh, another day and I'll do some ride outs and I'll do a time lapse and stuff and hopefully i'll be able to take my tripod out of me and you can see how the bike handles in um certain hills and stuff and uh yeah we'll go from there um but yeah thoroughly thoroughly recommend the bike um absolute beautiful thing really really nice and i wish i'd have actually have bought one um a good few years ago although having said that the technology has probably been perfected now and anything you get now is probably all the bugs and that would have been ironed out on it um so yeah, I mean, what I am planning on doing is when I do longer rides, I'm gonna get some uh, panniers to go on this uh, rack because um, it's very, very strong. I say 25 kilo is phenomenal uh, carrying capabilities. But yeah, absolute joy, absolutely love it. Really, really, really pleased with it. So, apart from Beverly, it's probably the best thing I've actually bought in the last 15 years. And that's saying something. It's, uh, and well done, high bike. You've done a fantastic job and you, Bosch for the drivetrain and the battery. Anyway, guys, I'll crack on with my ride out and I'll catch up with you guys uh, soon. Oh, and by the way, um, this is uh, Memorial. I don't know if you've seen it in the background when I've been filming, because it's nice and quiet here. And uh, I can't go over there because there's uh, bars, but this is basically RF Sorbidra. And there used to be um, an RF base here, over here, I believe it was, in the uh, Second World War. So yeah, so, and that's a propeller blade there. Pretty cool. Anyway guys, I will catch up with you on my next video. Bye for now.